Welcome back to episode three of the Garage Build, and it's gonna be the final episode because we're running out of things to do otherwise. And we're gonna be doing three things today. First up, we're gonna be using the 3D printer because so many people have been asking when we're gonna use it. And today, I'm gonna be 3D printing a cool GCN logo so that over here, I can set the logo into the worktop and then I'm gonna be pouring a resin tabletop over it, which is gonna be super clear. And then, the lighting and visual guys have been calling out for this for the last few weeks. So I'm going to be installing some LED strip lights underneath the worktop lip here, and that'll round us off for the day. This is my 3D printer, but don't get your hopes up because it's a hobby grade 3D printer. This is not the sort of thing that can be used to 3D print a bike or structural components because this uses a plastic filament cable which is wound through here and then heated up into a liquid plastic and then deposited in separate layers to build up the item that you're trying to manufacture. So it's not intended for large components or anything that needs to be very strong. I've already drawn up the designs on the computer last night that I need to make my GCN logo. So all I need to do now is go 3D printer. That's our 3D printed GCN logo done and dusted. It only took two hours 30, so big shout out to the cameraman for keeping a nice steady hand, so we've got footage of that. And all that remains now is to peel this magnetic print bed carefully off of the 3D printer. We can transfer across over to here, and then I can remove the 3D printed logo off of the print bed, and then glue it in place nice and centrally on a worktop to then carry on and get the resin top on there. All that I need to do now is use a tape measure to measure out on this worktop the centre location so I know where to put this logo. And I have taken a picture of it on my phone how it is now because all of these pieces are individual components. So as I peel it off of this print bed, they're going to get all jumbled up so I need to know how to replicate it nice and centrally, exactly how it's meant to be. Not quite how it needs to be just yet, but we'll get it sorted in no time. But before we do that, let's get our work area nice and clean and tidy and then we can carry on. Okay, so we've got all of our components here for the next stage of the process. So let's run through what we've got. Well, first up, we've got a two-part clear resin here, so we need to mix those together when we're ready to pour at that stage. Going into the resin, I've got here some iridescent colour shift flakes because I think that'll just help make it look super cool. We've got a mixing paddle so we can mix our two parts of resin together. And then here is our clear plastic, which I'm going to cut into some small sections so I can then box off this area of our worktop so that when we pour the resin, it doesn't just run onto the floor. And the reason I'm only doing this section of worktop rather than the whole thing is because it would have taken absolutely ages and cost a bomb. But first up, let's get our logo glued in place. And to do that, I'm going to use the hot glue gun. just stretching the old back after leaning over, gluing all of that. But hopefully, that is every sort of gap and crevice filled up with hot glue so that when we pour the resin in, hopefully it doesn't just run away everywhere and we end up with no resin tabletop. Um, so next up, I better start mixing the resin and preparing what it is I'm gonna need to do for that um, and follow the instructions. Right, resin time. I've got part A mixing here already, pre-warmed, because that's ready to go. We've got part B here, which is the hardener, and then we mix these together in our bucket using the drill to mix it all together. And then I can add in our color shift flakes. So once that's mixed for a couple of minutes, we can head inside and then pour it onto our worktop. I've got 
the resin mixed, and although it does look quite cloudy at the moment, but the bottle does assure me that it will set nice and clear. A little bit runnier than what I was hoping for, but all that means is hopefully I've sealed it up well enough that it won't just run away. And I guess I just go ahead and pour it nice and carefully. Are you ready for me to pour? I just... <laughs> That's it, resin is poured and I think you'll agree, it looks absolutely epic and so far so good. We've got a couple of small little runs, but I think that should all be okay. And obviously it's gonna take a few days to set, so we'll have to come back then and revisit it and I'll see you there. Right, we're back, and after a little bit longer than I had planned, because it's taken best part of five days for the resin to dry nicely, and now it does look nice and solid, so what we've got to do today is break off our edging and hopefully see what sort of finish we've got. Then we can use this edging here to put a nice finish all the way along our worktop, and spoiler alert, I've already fitted the lights underneath the worktop here at the weekend. I was just far too excited and couldn't wait. So first off, let's break this edging off. So first bit's off, and as you can see, even though I sealed up the edges as best as I could with hot glue, the resin has found its way through all of the tiny little gaps that I must have missed. So it looks like we're gonna have a little bit of preparation here where we can break this excess overflow off and then maybe even have to sand down the edges before we put the beading on. Right, I've got the edge cleaned up as best as I can for now, but because it's leaked through a fair little bit, I'm gonna to have to save doing that properly until I've got a weekend with not much else on so I can sand it all the way back to a nice finish again. And the same goes for some of the other areas here where you've got a bit of resin that's just leaked through all the way down. I can clean that up at a later date. Next job today though, is to get this edging on so we can cut one section here and then step it down and run a full length all the way along the wooden part of the worktop. So that's next and let's get attaching it. Need to just smooth the edge of this off now using the world's smallest bit of sandpaper. Well, I guess it is for a pretty small job, eh? We've got our aluminium edging stuck on the worktop, so it's only right now that we get some metal polish and shine it up so it's got a nice little sheen to it. Back in episode two of the garage build, quite a few people asked if I was gonna be putting any pictures on the wall. And the answer's yeah, because it's quite a good idea. So we've got these. This one is a cool print from the Tour of Britain, the year I won the Sprints jersey. And this one is just a cool print that we had lying around in the house. So one of them's gonna go here, and one of them over there. Let's do it. This rounds off episode three of the Garage Build and draws the entire Garage Build series to a finish because we've run out of things to put on the wall. But rest assured, I will be tinkering away over the coming weekends to get it just right. That's unfortunately it for the Garage Build mini-series. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know I certainly have. And if you have, well, give this video a big thumbs up and let us know your thoughts on it in the comments section down below. I guess uh, I'll see you next time we move house. See ya.